Hungary and I'm just forgetting. Thank you for joining, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Komadi ki Mataji. Dandvat Pranam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. Uh, this is Radhika Mataji. Oh, Radhika Mataji. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you for joining this uh, second Vedam class. And um, please accept my humble obeisances. Congress to all the devotees. Thank you, Mataji, for having me. Thank you for joining. You I don't much. know how to get this thing out here. Please. Now, welcome to the Sangal Park Conference. So, today's class will be given by His Ram Gidari Prabhuji on the topic of Shaitan and Sadam. Uh, I will not until it chapter third uh, and chapter twelve onward. Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji, are you present on the call? Hare Krishna, yes, Mataji. Thank you very much, Prabhu Ji. Dhanvat Pranam. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for joining giving you very valuable time and association to us this morning and enlightening us on this topic. I now hand over the call to you, Prabhupada. Please take it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for engaging me in this service. And uh, my sincere apologies that I won't be able to turn on my video because I'm on a very um, low internet speed. Uh, I'm uh, down in South India. I'm using my mobile data, so excuse me for not able to turn on my video. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda So we are discussing from Chaitanya Charitamrita Antya Leela Chapter 3 and we are discussing from verse number 12 onwards so, it's a very interesting chapter. The chapter title is The Glories of Shla Haridas Thakur. And uh, in India today, it's Haridas Thakur's glorious disappearance day. Um, I, I think in US, uh, it was yesterday. So, of course, the current context that we are in is not yet about Haridas Thakur. The current context, just for the benefit of those who are, um, or who must have missed the earlier sessions, or who must have heard the previous sessions, it's a very interesting context. So, Mahaprabhu had a very close associate by name Damodar Pandit. And this Damodar Pandit used to have very special attachment affinity for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to an extent that he was even possessive or even very concerned about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movements and activities. So there was a young widow who had a beautiful son. <laughs> So he used to be very closely serving Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to give all privileges, maybe little more than anyone could uh, comprehend. So Mahaprabhu used to be very close to that boy. He used to be very, uh, you know, fond of that boy. He's let the boy access 
what is so called uh, you know uh, those things and those conversations which otherwise mahaprabhu is very particular about not to let anyone else uh, participate so this behavior of mahaprabhu gave some sort of a feeling i mean this feeling uh, this uh, this behavior of mahaprabhu gave some sort of a feeling to damodar pandit that why is it that mahaprabhu is doing like this so that's the context so we will read few verses today and then churn as a, as always uh, the purport and learn some lessons today so we, i'll read some shlokas um, few shlokas today and then uh, we will consolidate them chaitanya charitamrita anti lila chapter 3 text number 12 onwards e be goshani raguna yasya sabaloke gaibe tabe goshani ra pratishta purushottame haibe translation you are known as gosai teacher or acharya but now talk about your attributes and reputation will spread throughout the city of purushottama how your position will be impaired text 13 suni prabhu kahe kya kaha damodara damodare kahe tumi swatantra ishwara translation although shri chaitanya mahaprabhu knew that damodara pandita was a pure and simple devotee upon hearing this impudent talk the lord said my dear damodara what nonsense are you speaking purport damodara pandita replied you are the independent personality of god at beyond all criticism text 14 swachande achara kara ke pare balite mukar jagate re muka phara achadite my dear lord you can act as you please no one can say anything to restrict you nevertheless the entire world is impudent people can say anything how can you stop them text 15 pandita hana mane kene vichara nakara randi brahmani ra bhalake priti kene kara dear lord you are a learned teacher why then don't you consider that this boy is the son of a widowed brahmani why are you so affectionate to him text 16 यद्यपि ब्राह्मणि सेय तपस्विनि सति तथापि ताहार दोष सुंदरि युवति ऑल्दो द बॉयज मदर इज कंप्लीटली ऑस्टियर एंड चेस शी हैज वन नेचुरल फॉल्ट शी इज अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल यंग गर्ल टेक्स्ट 17 tumi ha parama yuva parama sundara loke ra kana kani baate deha avasara and you my dear lord are a handsome attractive young man therefore certainly people will whisper about you why should you give them such an opportunity purport as a simple and staunch devotee of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu Damodara Pandita could not tolerate criticism of the Lord but unfortunately he himself was criticizing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his own way the Lord could understand that it was because of Damodara Pandita's simplicity that he imp- imp- impudently dared criticize him nevertheless such a behavior by a devotee is not very good so we will discuss till verse number 17 om agnana timirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena 
ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚತ್ಯಾದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭುನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರವಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ಲೆಂಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಲೆಸನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ deep subject matter that is we are going to discuss and we will try to see as best as we can to churn this current context you can list probably like 15 different lessons that we can learn out of this current context but we will limit ourselves to the next 45 50 minutes to discuss the scenario shila prabhupad has very candidly put that how damodara pandita was a very simple and a staunch devotee of lord chaitanya and he can't tolerate anyone who would criticize chaitanya mahaprabhu but in the pretext of such a consciousness he landed himself to criticize mahaprabhu and this is something all sadaka they go through day in and day out in their association and shila prabhupad very nicely put in here that it's not a very good behavior and it's all the more interesting how chaitanya mahaprabhu is handling this it's very very interesting because mahaprabhu would not generally tolerate a person's deviant behavior or an apparent fall down or an app- apparent mistake especially when they are very closely associated with him mahaprabhu does not give any tolerance he is very particular we spoke in the previous chapter about chota haridas wherein mahaprabhu was very strict towards chota haridas and especially in the same context with respect to dealing with women and here damodara pandita is responding to a behavior of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and how mahaprabhu handled damodara pandita is also very unique mahaprabhu actually gave a punishment in one sense by asking damodara pandita to stay away from shri chaitanya mahaprabhu at the same time he rewarded by engaging him in further more personal service to shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and at the same time he acknowledged that whatever damodara pandita is doing even though they may not be necessarily correct 
as well as not expected of him he has done it because of sincere love that he has for me so many intricate details are you know thought through so we are going to learn some set of lessons today and through those lessons let's see if we have uh, something to take home first lesson in our practice in krishna consciousness whilst we are dealing with seniors whilst we are dealing with self realized devotees whilst we are dealing with people who are above us in terms of spiritual consciousness of course even if they are in their position wise senior there are some uh um uh, etiquettes that we need to follow as we always say about seniority versus advancement seniority is about age ashrama position and varna if somebody is a brahmana if somebody is a sanyasi if somebody is a temple president or a, you know an authority or if somebody is you know 85 75 80 you know elderly we are supposed to respect of course we are supposed to respect everyone but at least these people are senior so they command some respect but it's all the more important that we learn to respect we know to understand or handle advanced devotees in a very matured and a composed manner of course this is a leela through which mahaprabhu is eventually trying to teach us a lesson so damodar pandita happens to be uh, you know putting himself into such a scenario it's a very wonderful one so the first lesson that we are learning is each and every one of us need to take utmost care in vaishnava etiquette in a vaishnava etiquette and every time when we are dealing with our seniors every day when we are dealing with our spiritual master every day when we are dealing with somebody who is spiritually advanced than us we need to learn to learn those things that are needed for us and learn to apparently uh not bother ignore those contradicting things i am not saying this shla prabhupad is saying this probably the next speaker or the speaker after me uh, two days later will talk about this purport if you further down go over three four shlokas in one of the purports prabhupad is writing rashi la prabhupad is saying that a disciple should understand a spiritual master is beyond it's a very complicated subject and uh, intricate one so i may you know i'm not sure how much i'm able to communicate but shri prabhat says a spiritual master is beyond doubts a self realized soul should not be doubted your intentions may be correct the purpose may be correct but you are consciousness and understanding should be so spotless so much so ashla prabhat says even if you happen to see your spiritual master walking in and out of a bar you should you should understand that he is gone for a spiritual agenda but this whole subject is a pretty uh i mean it can be a controversial conversation as well prabhu let us be practical let's see the last 50 years of history in his con how many fall downs how many deviations how many cheatings how many uh, you know so many things have happened and all of them have not just happened just like that it is because of some carelessness some overlooking some 
high you know over uh, grading somebody i will not go into the history of those conversations but the siddhanta here is if you happen to understand if you know for sure within your limited understanding if you know for sure within the guru sadhu sangha circle if you know for sure that your spiritual authority is a bona fide representative of shila prabhupada then please learn to learn those things by which you can go closer to him and you can go closer to krishna and simply ignore or if you happen to have some you know curiosity or some you know sense of questioning please ask for clarification rather than giving an allegation or speaking impudently like damodar pandita here in 12th canto of shrimad bhagavatam second chapter when explaining about the nature of kaliyuga it is very nicely explained that in kaliyuga a person with audacity a person who speaks with audacity will be considered as a scholar but actually a scholar is not a one one who speaks with audacity a scholar is the one one who is dealing with simplicity or one who is uh, dealing things in a very uh, principled manner so damodar pandita somewhere somewhere because of his over cautious conscious possessive mentality towards sri chaitanya mahaprabhu which in a sense is good but when it cross a line when it cross a small barrier that is not so we are not supposed to cross it gets into a zone which is not very highly appreciated so now my first principle hence we all should learn is when you are dealing with your seniors when you are dealing with devotees who are spiritually advanced than you there may be many things many qualities many behavior which may apparently be either contradictory or confusing or to an extent somewhat you know wrong so we need to understand that there are certain things we don't understand we need to understand that our purpose here is not to correct our seniors rather than correcting ourselves and third thing is we we need to also understand that ultimately the spiritual master is under the direct care of his spiritual master and the parampara so he will definitely be taken care wherever need be having said that we are all eligible having rights to question submissively as a clarification to our spiritual master and there are many many episodes in shila prabhupad's relationship with his disciples and bhakti siddhanta saraswati maharaj's relationship with his disciples and each of them shila prabhupad and bhakti siddhanta saraswati maharaj handled in a unique manner there were people who went and questioned shila prabhupad who challenged shila prabhupad and who eventually left shila prabhupad there were some who went and questioned one of the very senior disciples of bhakti siddhanta saraswati maharaj who was funded by all the gaudiya mats in iskon i mean in india they funded him and sent him to london he stayed in london for four long years finally he came back to bhakti siddhant saraswati maharaj and he had an audacity to tell my dear gurudev there is something wrong in the philosophy that we are preaching 
we may have to slightly adjust it to be accommodating for western audience and you know what bhakti siddhant sarasvati maharaj of course i would not get into the entire conversation bhakti siddhant sarasvati maharaj eventually told him that you are not even qualified enough to come to my samadhi ceremony what to speak of you know i will accept you as my disciple life after life you cannot even come to my samadhi ceremony bhakti siddhant sarasvati maharaj you know was very upset because the disciple does not have the vision because of his conditioning because of his limited exposure to krishna consciousness because of his whatever you know mishra the the mixture in his consciousness he will not be able to see things beyond in fact you know as we always say in our uh, you know devotee circle sometimes when we read shila prabhupad books we will come across certain context where shila prabhupad would make a statement which is seemingly confusing or uh, you know unclear but when you continue keep serving or reading few shlokas few chapters later shila prabhupad would have clarified that point similarly it happened of giving instructions when shila prabhupad had many disciples to different disciples shila prabhupad gave different sets of instructions somewhat for a similar situation especially in los angeles there was scenario where there were some you know uh, management related situation where one group of people wrote to shila prabhupad and said how the management is is absolutely absurd and but still we are waiting for your advice and following the same manager and prabhupad said very nice keep doing that till i come and resolve it and the same los angeles there is another group of disciples they wrote to shila prabhupad and wrote and said that how they are not able to manage tolerate the mismanagement and hence they have decided to move on and do preaching staying away from that management shila prabhupad gave his response to them as well how they were you know still not getting disheartened and still keep on pushing the sankirtan movement so shila prabhupad was appreciative so shila prabhupad knowing whom he is dealing he handled the people according to desha kala patra time place and circumstances as well as what is called as immediate treatment and long term treatment when you go to a doctor for a specific set of disease a doctor tries to handle your disease to immediately solve the current set of symptoms so that it is com- the disease is controlled uh, you know at that point in time and eventually he suggests you a lifestyle so sometimes the immediate treatment that is given immediate you know solution that is given may not necessarily be the permanent solution but still a spiritual master considering various criteria he tries to you know um, communicate certain things to the disciple conduct certain things to the in front of the disciples do certain things in front of the disciples so shila prabhupad was a very powerful fierce preacher so there are certain things that shila prabhupad demanded from his disciples which were sounding very funny the other day i was talking to one devotee so he was making a very interesting point he shared what narayani mata ji shared uh, with him i'm just you know uh, repeating what i heard i know i i'm sure uh, the message is authentic so he he shared narayani mata ji mentioned to him that in our earlier days in iskon we were not completely following what shila prabhupada was saying because of his indian accent because of various uh, you know uh, reasoning 
we were not following exactly Srila Prabhupada's lectures. We were not able to completely absorb into whatever he was speaking. We were hardly be able to understand some of his, you know, uh, narrations or anything. But all we learned was loving him and respecting him and knowing whatever Swamiji says, it is for our good. And just because we developed love for Srila Prabhupada, we were eventually able to relate to whatever he speak, whatever he was sharing, whatever he was discussing. And then slowly, 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 we got into the groove and then we, you know, fully followed and understood. Otherwise, initially, probably we, 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 we could understand only 20-30% of what he was speaking. His accent was, accent was foreign. His, uh, you know, style, his uh, content, everything were foreign to us. Just that we had love for Srila Prabhupada. And along with that love, he taught us, he taught us, toleratedly, you know, toleratingly, he taught us mannerisms and etiquette. So here, the same thing, that Damodara Pandita's consciousness was assessed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Damodara Pandita knowing that, sorry, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knowing that Damodara Pandita's intention is not for demeaning or insulting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was just concerned for Mahaprabhu's credibility. But that also he need not have or even if he had to have, he could have asked it as a question or a clarification or a, you know, in a mannerism, in a, in a way by, by which Mahaprabhu need not uh, be, you know, um, challenged or questioned and that, that that people will be considering, you know, it's like a kind of doubting Mahaprabhu's character as if, of course, somebody can say that he was, he, was, he was actually questioning. It may not sound like a very, you know, unusual thing. But in a spiritual context, every movement, every spiritual conduct, every spiritual, you know, decisions that we take has, uh, has got, got its significance towards our consciousness, towards our progressive path in Krishna consciousness. That is why as you progress in Krishna consciousness, the details of Krishna consciousness matters the most. As they say that the, de the devil is in the details. So the more we are conscious about the details and how do we handle them, not just the details, we need to know to handle them. It's very important for our practice of Krishna consciousness. So hence my first reflection is about how do we, you know, respect, respond and handle our relationship with senior devotees. This is not only with respect to words. This is also with respect to our actions. The entire Vritrasura's pastime, the entire Samudra Mantan pastime, there are so many other pastimes in Srimad Bhagavatam is purely based on misconduct of a devotee. Indra was a devotee. Indra did everything very nicely. But just that he got a bit complacent and disrespected Brihaspati because of which the entire Vritrasura pastime unfolded one after the other, after the other, after the other. That Vritrasura's whole you know, episode is based on conduct of a devotee. A, a same scenario that when Indra did not, you know, understand that he, you know, the garland that Durvasamuni gave him, uh, he put it on uh, his elephant and his elephant stamped on it and Durvasamuni got upset. So, in our spiritual dimension, we need to make sure that it is not just our words, it's about our action, it is about the conduct and our internal consciousness, the intent behind all of those things, everything needs to be monitored meticulously in every moment. We cannot just say that, Prabhuji, 99% everything is clean, just one person, I just uh, you know, happen to do this. 
according to mahaprabhu standard maybe shila prabhupad is much more merciful and the disciples of shila prabhupad are much more merciful and because of their mercy we are able to you know still uh, sustain things but otherwise the standard that mahaprabhu had set is please make sure that you follow a very strict etiquette the second principle which is a um, which i am going to use our very famous verse trinatapi sunichena to explain this trinatapi sunichena taro rapi sahishrana amanina manadena shloka if i may you know take an analogy of a tree this uh, with the help of uh, his own sachinandan maharaj's uh, explanation i am sharing certain thoughts maharaj has explained this very nicely so i am uh, i am inspired to uh, use his uh, explanation so a tree has got three portions one is a root second is a trunk third is the crown so this tarorapi sahishnuna actually refers tarorapi means the, you know tolerant tolerant than a tree so what does it actually mean in our krishna consciousness and how does it fit into this current context so the root of our root of the tree or root of our krishna consciousness is spirituality which means the root of our krishna consciousness is if we do not work on what is unseen the root is unseen the root is been you know beneath the ground if we do not work on what is unseen it is very difficult to sustain what is seen so what is this root spirituality all about what is this root refers to it refers to thoughts desires habits character destiny you sow a thought to reap an action you sow an action to reap a habit you sow sow a habit to reap a character you sow a character to reap a destiny so our root of our krishna consciousness is if we all are very serious in our krishna consciousness the root of our krishna consciousness is how much have we developed foundational understanding in building our thoughts to action to eventually to our character development so here damodara pandita has been always uh you know associated with shri chaitanya mahaprabhu very intimate with shri chaitanya mahaprabhu very you know uh personal with shri chaitanya mahaprabhu but he still he couldn't relate to certain aspects of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu which is what mahaprabhu was concerned or in a sense mahaprabhu while acknowledging his love but he didn't want any further debacle any further damage in that relationship so actually mahaprabhu sent him away from his association as a punishment or as a kind of a response to this mahaprabhu did not even try to clarify if you follow the further episode shri chaitanya mahaprabhu did not even clarify to damodara pandita how he is correct or not correct he said what nonsense are you speaking about that's all he said and furthermore mahaprabhu in case of chota haridas in case of pratap rudra in case of pratap rudra mahaprabhu did not even want to meet mahaprabhu for uh, you know pratap rudra for some time until you know sarobhama bhattacharya intervened in case of chota haridas it you know it was very extreme in case of uh, uh, balabhadra bhattacharya when he traveled with mahaprabhu to vrindavan mahaprabhu slapped him so for different people mahaprabhu gave different types of punishment in case of gopala chapal mahaprabhu did not even want to look at him till shrivas thakur looked at him in case of jagai and madai mahaprabhu kept on you know screaming chakra chakra so mahaprabhu responded to different offensive situations differently 
But here in Damodar Pandita's case, very subtly, softly, Mahaprabhu handled because of only one criteria that Damodar Pandita had a very good intention, but Mah he did not have a very good e way of expressing his intention. So my second reflection is that in our Krishna consciousness, whilst we are supposed to be tarorapi sahishtuna, tolerant than a tree, the tolerance in in our Krishna consciousness should be directed towards proper character development. And this proper character development comes by we, uh, you know, uh, diligently and very consciously looking at each and every thoughts and actions and habits and character that we are developing. So the root of our Krishna consciousness is about spirituality, which means character development. As we always discuss, Srila Prabhupada wanted, Srila Prabhupada had expected all of us to be gentlemen devotees. Srila Prabhupada had expected us that we all become gentlemen. A devotee is not just somebody who is knowing to practice devotional activities. A devotee is the one who is having a very gentlemanly behavior. Just before this session, uh, I had a discussion with our Mumbai devotees. We are discussing a lecture series on digital devotion. So as a part of the discussion, we were discussing how our practicing of Krishna consciousness should be on the basis of dharma. If we are not dharmic, if we are not practicing Krishna consciousness with some basic ethics and culture, then our Krishna consciousness remains incomplete or adulterate. So hence my Second reflection is about how in our Krishna consciousness we need to learn to give um, importance to character development whilst we, our intentions may be correct. Our expression should, uh, express, expressions should also be you know, monitored. Just because intentions are correct is not enough. Uh, there's a very famous pastime. Uh, it's very you know, interesting and also a a uh, heavy pastime. We have, I think we have discussed this about um, Rupa Goswami or Sanatana Goswami. I don't remember exactly. Once uh, he was in a samadhi. As a part of the samadhi, he was participating in Radha and Krishna's uh, pastimes. He transported himself whilst he was physically sitting in Vrindavan in samadhi. He transported his consciousness and completely dived deep into the Radha and Krishna's pastimes. And this Radha and Krishna's pastimes, there were some you know jolly jokes and games were going on and they were having fun as a part of the pastime. And because Rupa Goswami or the, the Goswami, whether it's Rupa Goswami or Sanatana Goswami, when he transported himself to that pastime, he started to laugh along with that pastime. And at that same moment, a devotee, not so, you know, whatever, you know, state in comparison to Rupa Goswami, he happened to pass in front of Rupa Goswami and that devotee had got some uh, uh, a kind of a neurological situation called idiosyncrasy. So he had some, you know, bodily movements in a very funny way because of his nervous disorder. So when Rupa Goswami was laughing at the Leela that is happening in his Samadhi, this devotee mistook, misunderstood that Rupa Goswami is laughing at me. And just because this devotee's feelings got hurt, so Rupa Goswami had to quit, had to be thrown out because a devotee inadvertently, you know, uh, whatever. I mean, Rupa Goswami never saw the devotee, never meant to humiliate the devotee, but the devotee felt hurt because of the action of Sri Rupa Goswami. He had to be thrown out of the Samadhi. Of course, if you ask for an explanation, what would otherwise Rupa Goswami could have given, done or whatever that is, but this Leela is only stated to explain the gravity of the problem. 
so even though our intentions may be correct if somewhere our expressions are wrong we need to make sure that we somewhere or that we conscious that is why every day we have a culture of offering our obeisances offering our for you know uh, uh, apologies to our spiritual master uh, चक्षुदान दिलोजे जन्मे जन्मे प्रभु से दिव्य ज्ञान हृदय प्रकाशित हो वाइल्स वी आर आस्किंग दैट फेवर वी आर आल्सो एक्सप्लेनिंग एंड एक्सप्रेसिंग आवर सिचुएशन टू आवर स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर सेइंग दैट बाय नोइंगली और अनोइंगली आई मे हैव कमिटेड ऑफेंसेस सो काइंडली फॉरगिव मी सो माय सेकंड रिफ्लेक्शन इज हेंस अबाउट हाउ आर वी लर्निंग टू एक्सप्रेस सो that is why action in krishna consciousness need to be monitored very meticulously and the more and more we go closer to krishna our actions are very closely monitored along with our consciousness and after a point in time our action and consciousness gets completely aligned so much so that there are, there is no mismatch of course at that point in time we will be used for leela purposes the way rupa goswami was used to explain a particular siddhanta but otherwise we are you know we will get properly situated the second aspect uh, the, the, the third reflection in our today's discussion is about the trunk of the tree taro rapi sahishnuna the trunk of the tree refers to the physical and emotional well being every devotee for him to properly function in krishna consciousness to properly take care of his devotional duties it is just not the character that matters it is just not thoughts actions habits characters that matters it is about physical and emotional well being that is very important in one of the lectures his holiness radhanath maharaj mentioned that don't give your emotional remote control to someone else in the sense we need to make sure that the way we handle our emotions the way we handle our physical well being is very important component in our krishna consciousness so the tolerance the taro rapi sahishnuna tolerance sometimes when we hear the word tolerance which means that i am doing a favor to somebody else that guy is doing something wrong and i am doing i am perfect just by me tolerating i am trying to become little broad minded to accommodate him that's our understanding is whenever we hear the word tolerance we give brownie points to us we give negative points to the other person and we say that yes yes i have tolerated and that's why i became a devotee but that's not necessarily the case probably you are not able to comprehend what the other person is up to probably you are getting agitated because of the other person's behavior probably we are weak hearted not to be able to understand what is happening the other side and because of that we are emotionally getting disturbed and because of that our krishna consciousness is getting compromised and because of that we are not able to progress in krishna consciousness look at this whole uh, you know game of conversation because this tolerance and patience conversation is such that it gives us some sort of a credit or some sort of a crown who oh, i am patient i am tolerant i am humble it is not something that we are doing favor to others by we being tolerant actually actually mean that i am not getting agitated because of the situation around situations are situations and that may happen to be a situation because of various external factors which i may not be able to understand or comprehend but i am supposed to remain stable in krishna consciousness so that 
these situations does not affect my progress in Krishna consciousness. So Damodar Pandita's episode may not be so grave to be blowing things out of proportion. But at least the lessons that we need to learn out of it is such that let's learn to maintain our physical and emotional well-being in such a manner that we don't let ourselves loose during this during any such you know situations may it be justifying may it be you know not justifying may it be uh, you know whatever let's not overreact rather let us try to always reflect upon ourselves am i you know properly situated or not so technically where does this uh, you know uh, where does this actually gets challenged is when we are in a service of being a leader being a counselor being a mentor when you have a lot of subordinates looking up to you we have to manage this physical and emotional well-being properly because people will be looking up to us people will be glorifying us people will be positioning us little whatever great we are and we will start to believe them and forget what we actually are up to when we are really counseling mentoring whatever we are doing we need to remember that we are just a appointed empowered postman apart from delivering what shla prabhupad has given us we are not doing any gro- you know great glorious activity so we are an empowered personality somebody has empowered us to do that service because of us being their servant we are supposed to follow their order and fulfilling that mission given to us and hence we are an empowered postman empowered messenger empowered personality to give krishna's knowledge to others otherwise we are also a sadhaka practitioner at least i'm talking about in the in our normal context i'm not talking about some extraordinary context at least I'll, when i'm reflecting upon myself when i'm practicing krishna consciousness i am you know acting as a counselor to few people but when i reflect upon myself i need myself counseling too so hence this uh, aspect of physical and emotional well being is very very important in our spiritual journey in our spiritual associations so that we know how to conduct ourselves in very senior associations in our lives and finally the third aspect of the tree is the crown when we when we know the root of it which means i know to work on what is unseen and make it uh, properly you know uh, handle it so that the remaining scene can be sustained which means i build a proper character when i know to handle my physical and emotional well being and cultivate then i will be able to uh, you know properly serve the society uh, the tree is called apple tree because it produces apples our service determines our values so we are able to serve the output of our service is actually dependent completely on the root and the trunk what you are in your consciousness in your character what you are in your emotional and physical you know uh, context you will be able to produce the result in your service in your contribution so many times we see confusions in services many times we see so much of disturbances in services is because somewhere in the root we have a problem because somewhere in the trunk we have a problem and suddenly the crown you know starts to grow and the net net outcome is completely distorted or you know not so healthy this is pretty you know uh, realistically we can see this on, see this in our regular day to day context so hence our uh, service to the society service to other vaishnavas service to other people is something completely dependent upon what we have you know um, what we have been in our uh, personal self what we have been in our emotional self so it is very important 
So a very interesting uh, point. Uh, I, all these points I've been sharing with, with the help of a devotee uh, who gave this presentation as well as, uh, you know, Sachinandan Maharaj uh, who gave, uh, I mean, who the devotee who, with whose presentation I'm uh, kind of borrowing or, you know, inheriting. He inherited from Sachinandan Maharaj. Very interesting since morning I've been reflecting on this point. So, you know, a materialistic perspective, a person who is selfish, who is not having right character, always thinks the life is like an ice cream we should enjoy before it melts. But a person who is self-realized, he thinks, or, uh, you know, Srila Prabhupada's perspective is, life is like a candle. We should enlighten others into Krishna consciousness before it melts. So these two are, you know, very diametrically opposite perspective. One leads to self-centered life. One leads to Krishna-centric life. So in our journey to Krishna consciousness, definitely we are directed, encouraged by our parampara to do a paropakar, to help others, to win more and more souls to Krishna. But we need to be very careful whom are we dealing, how are we dealing, why are we dealing, and various dimensions to that, so that in, in the process of we doing paro upakar, let's not do some, you know, uh, damage to our own Krishna consciousness. Of course, in this case, current context, Damodara Pandita did not, you know, lose his devotional stature. That is again because of the kindness of Mahaprabhu who acknowledged Damodara Pandita's intention. At the same time, Mahaprabhu did not like Damodara Pandita's, uh, you know, uh, impudence about uh, thinking Mahaprabhu uh, dealing with this small boy as some sort of a, um, inappropriate or maybe a probable inappropriateness that others might feel about him. So which uh, Mahaprabhu did not like because he thought that that's, that's a little too much for Damodar Pandita to think like that. So to conclude my you know statement, I would like to you know say that in our Krishna consciousness journey, there are a lot of uh, you know uh, gross external things that we handle things uh, better, easier. But then when it comes to sukshmata, subtle things in our Krishna consciousness, especially in terms of practices in line with our intentions and consciousness, we need to be very careful. Otherwise, we may be thinking that we are progressing, but we may be hampering our own Krishna consciousness. There are many more lessons, many more interesting context that your future speakers will be bringing in here into this current uh, uh, series. So I'm sure that you all will turn more and more on this. So I would like to end here. If there are any questions or comments, I'll be happy to respond. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Shishi Chaitanya Charitamrita ki jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Very nice instructional class and explaining very nicely. Thank you, Prabhuji. I don't have a question, but if anybody else has any question, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. So my name is Anshu. So I have one question and thank you for a nice class. Um, so my question is like, what is the difference between mental, um, like, realizing, like, um, like, um, what is the difference between you were saying that like um, mental uh, something you were saying so like I forgot what you were saying like um, mental um, you were saying like mental or something I forgot what you said I mean you can go ahead and say you can state your questions maybe I will be able to uh, reconcile, reconcile things, uh, and and so what, can you finish your question? I mean, I forgot my question, right? Okay, so maybe you can, you know, take some time to you know recollect. Hare Any other questions? Hare. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I have a few questions. Thank you so much for the very interesting class and definitely a very interesting episode. 
um, with a lot of instructions as you very nicely always uh, delineate every time. So um, and my questions are, um, um, so in this case of um, this uh, Brahmin's um, boy going and taking association of uh, Lord Chaitanya, and uh, uh, Damodar Pandit actually chastising Lord Chaitanya. So we also saw about intentions and so many other things that you were touching upon. So uh, this uh, criticizing, of, of course, he did it out of love, uh, which was again explained. And uh, this criticizing, uh, was it because, I mean, I'm just trying to understand how, what is the root cause of the criticism? Uh, was it because he, he developed a pride of being a close associate of Lord Shaitanya or, um, you know, uh, what, I mean, uh, he, he just thought that um, you know, uh, uh, unnecessarily another uh, child is actually getting more association than uh, what is deserved for his close associates. So what was the root cause of the criticism? And of course, I also understand the other side that he wanted to make a correction to Lord Chaitanya uh, so that the people don't misunderstand him. But uh, just like how we see the story of Chitra Ketu, Chitra Ketu was uh, definitely trying to uh, tell Lord Shiva uh, about the situation uh, because people will misunderstand him. At the same time, um, it is also explained that he had a tinge of pride of seeing the Lord uh, face to face, seeing Lord Sankarshana. So that actually uh, came out as his criticism, though he was doing it for the good of Lord Shiva. So was it something like that? Or how do we compare it and analyze and understand the root cause? Can you please? Fantastic. Yeah, so I will tell you my reflections. I'm, I may not be completely perfect, but I'll, I'll share. So my reflections on this is about being extra possessive than what is required. Sometimes what happens is that when we are over possessive about our relationships, we get over protective and we try to think that I am the well-wisher and I need to make sure that the uh, uh, needs or whatever uh, of my beloved is taken care. Otherwise, he will be in trouble. So mm -hmm. this this point of I need to take care till then we are okay. If I do not take care, he will be in trouble. That's when we try to undermine the power and position of the other person. So the nature of overprotective or over possessiveness towards, uh, you know, our spiritual authorities, Prabhupada explains, actually, if you go further, three, four purports later, Prabhupada explains that a person need to, I mean, this is a very intricate because history says something else. Philosophy says something else. And how do we apply in our current context? And the way I do it is, uh, you know, what I was explaining. Somewhere or other, our Krishna consciousness is self-reliant plus the mercy of other Vaishnavas. Self-reliant in terms of our own practices and actions with the help of other Vaishnavas. So eventually it is you, Krishna and Guru. Guru is only a via media a support system. Otherwise, you to Krishna, develop love for Krishna with the help of all the spiritual associations and spiritual authorities. So better focus on internalizing Krishna consciousness. Look at the way Shad Goswami is dealt. If you go, if you look at the six Goswami, Shad Goswami Ashtakam, there are very nice explanation about their characters where they focused more towards internalizing, Krishnaizing and making sure to present Krishna to the whole world, not getting into any amount of nonsense. So my uh, two cents here is that if any time we are over possessive, I mean, we see devotees being possessive about their books, possessive about their place, possessive about their deities, possessive about their spiritual master, possessive about their, you know, various things. Some possessiveness is appreciated, but possessiveness beyond what is, you know, so-called, uh, you know, allowed possessiveness uh, becomes sometimes a hindrance in Krishna consciousness because they start to think, if I do not take care, probably he will fall down, he will get in trouble. So that propensity that tells you that you do not have 100% faith in your spiritual master or the spiritual process. So hence, uh, you know, uh, it is a little, little bit shaky there.
Does it make sense? Ah uh, yes, Prabhu. Very very nice answer and very it makes a lot of sense uh, putting the story together. Yes, definitely makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And um, the other point that I had was uh, looking at it from another perspective of um, the child getting the mercy of uh, Lord Chaitanya. Uh, we see that uh, Narayani was also widowed, and uh, she did have Randavan Das Thakur. Both Narayani and Randavan Das Thakur, they definitely received the mercy of the Lord without any hindrance or anyone um, saying anything about it. So um, oh, I don't know if uh, I mean, was it only because for uh, sorry, the mother Pandit specifically was there at this situation that this happened uh, in the case of this child? Is that how I should understand? Yeah. Narayani uh, uh, episode, whatever little and little uh, you know details I know. Narayani got Mahaprabhu's mercy when Narayani was a young girl. Mm -hmm. Narayani was the niece of Shiva's Thakur, and when Mahaprabhu used to visit Shiva's Thakur's house and doing all sorts of nocturnal kirtan and all those things, that's when Narayani got to hear from. Uh, uh, Shiva's Thakur's wife, but all of Mahaprabhu's childhood stories. Mm -hmm. So it was technically Narayani not as a widow when she mm -hmm. eventually had a very close association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if I may know correctly. Mm -hmm. Narayani had uh, more of personal association with Mahaprabhu. Happened mm -hmm. to see Mahaprabhu's action when Mahaprabhu, when Narayani was a young girl. Mm -hmm. Eventually, when she became mother, then she narrated all those stories to Vrindavan Das Thakur. It was not at that time. Mahaprabhu was very closely or very uh, detailedly dealing with them. Maybe mm. there are more details to this that I do not know that. No, no, it's very nice. I mean, your answer makes sense. Uh, you know, the context and the answer makes sense. Thank you, Prabhu, for clarifying Thank that. Thank you. Arik. Yeah. And the other question was uh, sending him to Sachi Mataji's home. Because we see that in the verse it says, you're a very neutral person and it would be good if you go to... Sachi's home. So what is so necessary for Sachi Mata to have a neutral person? I mean, um, that's my point because uh, he, uh, Sachi Mata is, is not even a person who needs correction or she's not a sannyasi who needs, uh, uh, meaning uh, she's not in a situation where she has to deal with a lot of people and she requires a neutral character. So why specifically Sachi Mata's home is the service that he gets again? That is something that I didn't understand. Basically, my uh, two cents is that every time when there is an apparent fall down, mm. the solution is menial service. Mm. So technically speaking, suppose if I, for, for example, I made a mistake, mm. I made an offense and mm. it's a serious offense. I'm not, I mean, sure that I'm supposed to still practice Krishna consciousness, but how do I, where do I go? Where do I start? Suppose I am a guru or I am somebody who is in a, you know, profile and I made a mistake and I need to, you know, fix myself. What is the way mm -hmm. I have to go? Assume a humble menial service. Mm -hmm. So my reflection here is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent him to Sachi Mata to do what? Mm -hmm. To do menial service, to take care of her, look after her. So which means what caused you to jump up and down to do an overprotective thing? Mm. Whatever little iota of, uh, you know, uh, anartha will get cleansed when you do a menial service. Because the moment you do menial service to a self-realized soul, mm. you get to realize that I am nobody. I am just a servant of the servant of the servant. And mm. everything else is happening by Krishna's arrangement. Mm. So Mahaprabhu's, I mean, this is actually a management uh, solution that we always recommend in ISKCON, whatever, uh, you know, leadership, leadership circle. Any offense? Give up your profile, go to a you know, private place, clean toilet, wash pots, mop the floor, sweep the floor, do some menial service till you get some consciousness fixed. So mm. my uh, understanding is Mahaprabhu did that. Uh, very nice. And uh, so, of course, you did say in the class that he, uh, he, he was sent there as a punishment, meaning as a small chastisement or a punishment. So he was withdrawn from the association of Lord Chaitanya. Okay. And uh, so technically speaking, I mean, let me finish. The, the technically speaking, the point is that in Krishna consciousness, the punishment is also mercy. Huh. And it is also in, in one sense, like, you know, what uh, Nalakwara and Manigriva received from Narada Muni mm. is actually eventually became a mercy. So in that sense, uh, 
you know what uh, uh, damodar pandita is eventually going to receive or what chota haridas also received what uh, balabhadra mm-hmm. bhattacharya received what everybody received is actually in one form of another mercy but then the way it is expressed to different audience it is differently right 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 very nice very nice Ru. and uh, is there any other discussion about the child coming back after he was being asked not to come you know, or... i don't think so uh, because after this the krishnadas kaviraj goswami switches to uh, you know discussing about haridas tagore and this past time so mm-hmm. i guess uh, this uh, uh, very intricately uh, haridas uh, krishnadas kaviraj goswami touched upon this to you know uh, because these are all very that is why prabhupad says this is all very chaitanya charitamrita is a post graduate study is because of talking such an intricate uh, very detailed thing i don't know uh, if i have uh, ever come across what happened uh, to this of course in this car- current context the conversation focus had always been on damodar pandita and chaitanya mahaprabhu never went on to the widow or the boy mm. because they were a, i mean one point krishnadas kaviraj goswami very nicely explains that the mother is chased the lady is having right intentions the mm. boy is having uh, you know uh, loving and uh, uh, wonderful nature mahaprabhu was loving so there was no problem mm. so since there were no other problems there is nothing to deal with what has happened the boy were never punished the, the lady were never punished it was mm. only uh, the per- person who <laughs> looked at it uh, you know weirdly you know mm. god is back mm. very nice very very definitely as you said it's a very intricate past time and thank you so much prabhu a uh, beautiful class with such so many layers of realizations thank you so much hari krishna hari krishna all glory to prabhupada anybody else has any other questions uh, some mata ji who tried to ask a question which he forgot then if you want to if you have recollected prabhu ji good class Thank you, dear. Yeah, I think Anshu was the one who had a question, right? Anshu, do you want? Do you remember the class? I mean, sorry, do you remember the question? <laughs> Where is she? I think she's not there. She's not there. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Vrinda. Okay so if there are no questions uh, let's end here thank you so much Hare Krishna Prabhu ji Hare Krishna uh, thank you so much for a nice class Prabhu ji uh, Prabhu ji you mentioned about uh, Rupa Goswami's past time uh, uh-huh. where he meditating on the past times of Radha and Krishna and he just uh, burst into laughter and uh, when the devotee was passing by like he was coming to meet him right the devotee was actually but the devotee was the devotee was passing by i'm not sure if he was coming to meet him or he was passing by but he was just walking walking past him walking in front of him okay and then he thought that because he was a uh, lame and all he just he thought that rupa goswami laughed at him that for yep. a, yes for yes. and he like that yes. but uh, i i mean i was just reflecting on that prabhu ji like this happens right when like how that devotee did not have a faith that this is rupa goswami how he would laugh at me that is not even possible how he did not think like that actually as i said uh, this past time is a very uh, you know uh, touchy past time because neither there is a you know at least here in damodar pandita's case you can analyze and uh, reflect upon to say that probably there were some cautions but in case of rupa goswami and that uh, you know a devotee neither of them had um, um, uh, any bad intention but just to highlight a very subtle point saying that even inadvertently if we are uh, you know hurting a vaishnava it is not going to please krishna that's the whole message i don't think there is anything beyond that message that we need to derive from this past time if you analyze this we will fail because the devotee did not have any mistakes any problem any uh, you know uh, wrong intentions or wrong notion neither rupa goswami had the only message out of the whole you know you know this past time is that even though if a devotee is inadvertently offending just 
I mean, it's not even an offense from Rupa Goswami from a standpoint of his action, mm. but even though our inadvertent action have would have hurt a devotee, Krishna may not be pleased. So hence, hence the word Vancha Kalpa Taru Bischa, we always offer, and always ready to, you know, uh, stay grounded to a Vaishnava is only because that inadvertent behavior should also not be there, and we make sure. that we ask for forgiveness if some 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 of such such actions would have happened uh, you know in our lives that is the reason the whole propensity of a vaishnava is maintained in such a manner that we are very humble and stay grounded so that is why i always say that a devotee's life is stay grounded fly high we stay grounded by our consciousness and action fly mm-hmm. high by our glorification and preaching so hence this whole leela uh, i would not extend it anything beyond that point okay yeah yeah i understood prabhu ji yeah uh, it's such a subtle subtle thing like uh, i mean although we sometimes have very good intentions but sometimes they are misunderstood and then it happens unknowingly also right so it's very difficult sure. this prabhu ji very difficult very important and as i was telling in the class as we progress in krishna consciousness please look into the details of your devotion mm-hmm. it is like when i am admitted in intensive care unit it is just not the treatment that matters it is about the bed it is about the linen it is about every bit of you know instruments components that are in, you know involved in my treatment needs to be you know speak and span it is not that you know i gave just medicine so he'll be cured then why i need an intensive care unit i am in an in- intensive care unit because my condition is intense and i need utmost care so every parameter associated with my care needs to be absolutely you know you know absolutely taken into consideration and details need to be you know uh, importance need to be given to each of the details mm. similarly when we are getting serious into krishna consciousness our first the initial days of krishna consciousness everybody patted on our back and gave all good words but we cannot expect that till our last day as you progress go close slowly 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 you may have 95 things good but the remaining five things that may not be good needs to be mi- microscopically analyzed uh, evaluated handled purified and hence we can uh, you know make necessary progress of course on krishna's side he may still accept us on our spiritual master said he may still accept oh this guy is 90% perfect so let me accept him but that should not be our propensity our propensity should be i should always be you know correct i should always be you know clean and pure so from that standpoint we need to give importance to the details mm. make sense yes yes prabhu ji yes thank you so much okay. prabhu ji hari krishna krishna hari ji ram ke tari prabhu koti koti rangvat pranam chale prabhu pad sulagar dev ki jai prabhu ji uh, i am t- talking about myself uh, in our uh, my guru maharaj radhanath maharaj is american so prabhu is not accepting and uh, uh, doing everything nicely but uh, you tell that if 5% if i am not serving nicely oh you learn this thing from your guru oh you learn this thing from uh, radha rani and krishna and radha gopinath so prabhu ji somewhere else it's my fault that uh, uh, that is negativity is one by one layer coming in my mind and after 3 4 months it's coming out uh, 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 like a volcano so i become anger and uh, that is absolutely wrong prabhu ji i understand chunara pi suni chana tarora pi sais na but sometimes in a family uh, some it is uh, it is very hard to uh, like bhul the gaye maaf kar do in gujarati we said not one time every day we yes. take 10 time and then prabhu ji how our uh, father in law mother in law mental retired brother in law so nicely still we nobody is like um, um, satisfied and the 5% uh, 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 not able to um, satisfy that that guna they will um, just uh, like a click that you are not doing this you are not doing this pro- perfectly but at a time we have to do so many seva in a gujarati family is in a joint family so prabhu ji how can i remove all that anartha from my heart i should not keep it up one by one layer and uh, 
uh, throw it after three or four months, that, like volcano. That is absolutely wrong, Prabhu. But how can I remove that from other wish, other family member? Hmm. Very uh, complicated uh, scenario because this is not only your family case. Every individual uh, sadhaka, whether it's male or female, is going through that. My father passed away on 13th of August in the last uh, two and a half weeks. I have been going through so many such similar situations to deal amongst, to deal with one mind, which is our mind. It's a big problem. We have to deal with 25 mind who are all centered around a particular theme. Uh, and especially if you are uh, not so senior in the family in terms of age and uh, position. So we will have to go through that. But my reflection or my, you know, the way I handle or I'm still handling or mishandling or whatever, whatever you may say, is that uh, I use this as an opportunity to evaluate and test how much I have tolerance, how much I have humility, how much I have patience, how much I have simplicity. Because once uh, Radhanath Maharaj gave a very beautiful class, in the most perturbing situation, the most bothering situation how you handle tells who you are and sab kuch badiya chal raha hai. everything is going very nicely everybody is cooperating everybody is supporting will we go and tell Krishna that how tolerant I am you see how humble I am you see how patient I am you see you will not tell that to Krishna because there is nothing for you to tolerate only when people bother you only when people torture you, only when there is most perturbing situation or bothering situation, you will get to know your parameter on tolerance, patience and simplicity and humility. So please consider these all of these sir, as an opportunity for you to evaluate, rate your own tolerance level, your own patience level, your own... Maybe the other person is stupid, other person is incorrect, other person is whatever he may be. What is the definition of tolerance, patience, and humility? We just discussed. There are many, many explanations. One of the explanations is, how do I handle myself to that agitating situation? How I am physically and emotionally well? If I am emotionally not so well, the other person's mistakes, we will not be able to tolerate. Why? If it is his mistakes, why should we get perturbed? Second, if because of his mistake, he is blaming us, how can I be patient? If it is his mistake, he is blaming us, how can I remain still simple? Is that not what we are taught? And for the past 25 days, I am failing 25 days. Every day I am failing on this. But then every day when I fail, half an hour later I realize, no, no, this is not the way it's supposed to be. I supposed to reconcile myself and move forward. This is an opportunity for me to, you know, uh, pick up on these qualities. Otherwise, in Mumbai, when I am in with my all my congregation devotees, everybody, everybody respects you, everybody glorifies you. You cannot call yourself as a tolerant, humble, simple devotee. Because everything is everything is in place. Only when you are put into such a situation, most humiliating, tolerating, and uh, you know, insulting situation, how do you handle yourself matters. So I do not know how much of, you know, personal situation, uh, you know, we'll have to assess here because it's, it varies from family to family, person to person. But all I can say is what you are going through is not yours. Only everybody is going through that. And the way I handle it is I handle it for my personal assessment on my devotional qualities. Am I tolerant enough? Yes. How much? How much, how much I am not? How I, how I am patient, how much, how much I am not patient enough. So this is all my opportunity to learn and to call you know, honesty, with all honesty, I can confess I am failing every day. But at the same time, I am not stopping my assessment. I am going on assessing, going on telling, no, 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 tomorrow I'll have to fix this. Tomorrow when I'm going to be, you know, bothered, I should make sure that I, you know, respond well, respond properly, respond by composing myself. That's all I can say. Does it make some sense here? Yes, Prabhuji, and my daughter is 24 years old. She teach me that that time she's in a seventh grade. Ma, turn your face. 
so and go to hear the artis or kirtan uh, in india there is a temple near near by 10 10 minutes prabhu so i just turn my face from that situation when the uh, when i am right i know i am right but still my voice is because i am very younger in our family so my voice is not nobody will understand so i just turn my face and hear shishinarji's aarti and kirtan so why that way uh, sometimes that is also that is also a question itna gamandit hai ki aap mujhse baat nahi karoge aap chale jaoge i mean people will say that you are still <laughs> showing your face again i mean so the point is that whatever you do you will be questioned and insulted but still that's what uh, you know this qualities are all about so yes, good luck with negativity not come in my mind for own my purification i just turn my face from that situation Sure, sure, sure. Just train to face out the next day situation. <laughs> and after twenty three years, my sister in law, brother in law, my husband, all are Prabhu Ji. It take twenty three years. Now they started to hear Kirtan and lecture and Hari Krishna Mahamantra. So you see how much you are able to transform them. It works. Prabhu took forty four years before he started his con, but it's not that you know he was uh, you know sleeping. For forty-four years, Prabhupada was preparing. Similarly, all your endeavors will reap results. The process is in uh, last week's class uh, in Bhagavatam we discussed. King Malaya Dwaja chanted, prayed for thirty-six thousand earthly years before he could, ex- you know, get the devotional attraction. So, हमें तो दस पंद्रह साल में हमें रिजल्ट चाहिए ना तो प्रॉब्लम है. So, like ten fifteen years only we have done Krishna Bhakti. We'll do more. We'll do more. बहुना If nobody has any questions, we can go ahead. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for your very enlightening class today, and we are very grateful to you. We look forward to your association again in future. If <clears throat> so, we can end the call now. One chakal patarupyasya kripa sindhu bhayvacha pati tanam pavane bhu vishnu bhu namo namah. श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु चरित्र चरितामृत की जय श्री प्रभुपाद की जय श्री श्री राम गिरिधारी प्रभु की जय जय